Since our founding 30 years ago, EFF has frequently stepped in to defend security researchers from misunderstandings made by law enforcement. Security researchers play a vital role in fixing flaws in the software and hardware that we all use, but their actions and behavior is often misunderstood. Security researchers have habits and behavior that can seem eccentric or suspicious. They collect exotic hardware, they encrypt all of their communications, and they lock down their computers. They sometimes dress and behave differently from the norm. As part of their work, they may discover and tell a company that there is a dangerous flaw in their software. And this act of civic duty sometimes may be misunderstood as a hacking attack. When we first heard of the case of technologist Ola Bini, we thought that this is what had happened. The so-called evidence presented after the arrest of Bini, USB sticks, security keys, books on programming and cybersecurity, showed this mistaken thinking. Of course, owning such things is not a crime, but they can make those who do not understand our subculture suspicious. Yeah, we're happy to answer questions, by the way, about it, what these tools are actually used for and why someone like the technologist Ola Bini might own them. But as the case progressed, there were questions about this case that we could not answer from California. Eventually, we decided to come here to Ecuador to better understand what was happening. Our first point of confusion was this. The technologist Ola Bini has a global reputation as a computer security expert but not as the particular kind of security researcher who tests or exploits who finds flaws in software or services. Ola Bini is well known in the information security community instead as a, as a builder of secure software. He makes the tools that are designed so that others cannot break into them. Out of the many free software projects that Bini has contributed to, he has added features to a project that we ourselves manage, uh, called Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a free service that adds strong encryption and therefore security and privacy to websites. If you've ever seen a padlock on the corner of your web browser or typed HTTPS into your uh, uh, web browser, you may have been using Let's Encrypt in this software. Thanks to the work of the technologist Ola Bini and many others, Let's Encrypt protects the security of tens of millions of users across the web and the privacy of hundreds of millions of people around the world. There is nothing wrong with testing and finding flaws in security. It's a very important role. But that is not what our global community of technologists told us that Ola Bini does. From our own prior knowledge of his work, he builds strong systems. He does not borrow into them. Our second point of confusion was the lack of charges or details of the hacking attack. If someone breaks into your house and you arrest a suspect, the one thing the prosecution should, at the very beginning, be able to tell you is which house has been broken into. And it's the same in the digital world. Since the first press conference in April that announced that a team of Russian hackers were threatening Ecuador, since the initial arrest of technologist Bini and his nine-week imprisonment, since the release following a successful habeas corpus plea, since yesterday's 30-day extension of the investigation, we still have no idea what systems he is supposed to have broken into or any more details of his alleged criminal behavior. After a week of speaking here in Quito to journalists, politicians, lawyers, academics, and the technologist Ola Bini and his defense team, uh, and we've also extended invitations to the Interior Minister uh, Maria Paula Romo and Diana Salazar Mendez, we have, we hope, a better picture of what exactly is happening here. We will publish a subsequent report in detail, but we are happy to share our preliminary findings here and share them with you. In brief, based on the interviews that we have had this week, and the lack of evidence provided so far, our conclusion is Mr. Binney's prosecution is a political case and not a criminal case. The consensus of the experts that we spoke to was that an important factor affecting the current status of the trial was the perceived political consequences of either abandoning the case or prosecuting it to its conclusion. The details of who is responsible or who stood to benefit from Binney's prosecution varied depending on who we spoke to but we were profoundly disturbed by how much the political effect of Ola Bini's prosecution and Ola Bini's innocent or guilt appeared to be affected, uh, appeared to affect the current investigation. Technologist Ola Bini's innocence or guilt is a fact that should be determined by a fair trial that follows due process, separate from its political ramifications. 
Then his lawyers told us that they have counted 65 violations of due process so far in the trial, and the habeas corpus decision confirmed the weakness of the initial detention. Journalists here have told us that no one can give them a concrete description of what he has done, and we know that Ola's been his behavior and manner and who he knows as a computer expert, while they may look strange to others, are completely normal in the community from which he comes from and are not crimes. We urge political actors of all sides to step away from this case and allow justice to be done. Otherwise, they risk continuing to cause damage to the reputation of Ecuador's judicial system abroad, as well as failing to comply with international human rights standards as defined within the inter-American system for the protection of human rights. Uh, so our conclusions came primarily from the conversations that we had with the journalists, uh, academics, uh, lawyers, and uh, Congress people. Um, uh, what we saw was definitely a consensus that the uh, political situation was affecting the length of the process of the prosecution of Ola Bini and, uh, and the nature of the uh, charges that were served against him.